body, mind, and spirit. Three factors that are crucial to living a healthy, happy life. We're here to help your mind and spirit. Now, let someone help your body. Ember Athletics provides personalized and comprehensive online programs you can use anywhere in the world at any time you want. I use them to prepare for my wedding, but they can help with so much more, whether that's training for an event or challenge, getting your beach body, improving your health, or just about anything else. Ember Athletics customizes programs for your body, your health, your goals. Let Ember Athletics know you heard about them on this podcast and you'll get a discount when you sign up for a program. For more information, go to www.emberathleticsofficial.com. That's E-M-B-E-R athleticsofficial.com. Or you can call and text Chad, the head coach, at 602-628-9305. Welcome to Psychic Evolution with evidential psychic medium, Jamie Clark, and spiritual coach and healer, Maggie Clark. And welcome back to Psychic Evolution. I'm Jamie Clark. And I'm Maggie Clark. And this is the podcast where you discover the psychic potential within to empower yourself and manifest your psychic and mediumship gifts. And these abilities are so natural, they're supernatural. And today we're going to get into the colors of emotions. And when I read for people, there are many different ways that I read for them. But one of them is through the colors of emotions in their energy field. Have you ever heard of the old saying, they're green with envy, or I'm mad and I'm seeing red? It's colors that vibrate certain parts of information for you. And so today we're going to kind of put some parameters around that. I want to give you some tools and techniques and the ability to be able to read people, not with judgment, but understanding. Very rarely is a person motivated by only reasoning and not emotions and vice versa. And so when you realize that we are emotional beings and that there's energies of emotions always at play, you'll begin to feel what people are saying and what they're meaning. And those colors, those pieces of information will give you information about that particular person's choices and sometimes why they saw it that way or why they made that particular choice. And through those emotions, because that can be very scary sometimes, if we can understand the best that we can where that person is at and give them more comfort. Because once you get at least a gauge on how that person is viewing life, now you can approach it more effectively with that person's unique perspective. Not everyone else's unless they're looking for that. Uniquely their own. My job is to do the best I can to read their energy with accuracy and solid knowingness. I also know that typically I've always experienced colors as in like colors of the rainbow, colors of the chakra, and all these colors have such a beautiful significance to me. So when I study the chakras, a lot of times when I see colors around people, I relate it specifically to what chakra is this vibing with? What is it really showing me? And the vibrancy and the tone of the colors all has an expression. It all has a place where you can read energy. And not only reading energy in that capacity, but you'll get shapes. You'll get layers of information that for me when I'm reading can speak to me even more fully with knowledge about that circumstance. It's very interesting living with you, Jamie, because all the time you're like, well, I'm seeing this thing and it has a bluish shape and it looks like this. And you're trying to describe the shape, whether it's cylindrical or a wave, and it has this depth and it has this texture. And you, you can go on and on and on describing an energy that is in your field, that you're feeling, that you're palpating, that's coming to you or, or going outside of you or around someone else. And just to hear you talk about these colors It's a layer upon layer upon layer. So it's not just one color or two colors. This is like several colors all at once. And you're like, whoa, whoa. It's just fascinating to know that in one color, 
you can have so much information, but then the depth that goes into the colors and into the expressions, it's almost an infinite expression of energy, just like I feel it could be with numbers. You know, you only have nine numbers, but yet there's so many expressions of all those nine numbers. I think the same is true for these colors. And kind of like the numbers, as you break them down between one and nine, even if they're thousands of energies, that's pretty much what our thoughts are. You're sending out a lot of thoughts, but it can be broken down into specific colors of information. And exactly like Mag is saying, chakras, because you'll get a good gauge on if that person, oh, they're functioning from that root chakra, they're in survival mode, they're not sure about it, or, okay, wait a minute, they've got more of that heart vibe. So in that case, they're opening up to more love, they're opening up to more of life and to more people. And when you can do that, that's why I always say, I don't mean to be flippant or disrespectful. It's just emotionally, I'm not connected to the information. It's just information. Our job is to be as accurate and evidential as possible with that information to go from either, you know, that's really good guesswork or maybe there's something to this. And when people can get the the practicality of spirituality, it's a lot more easy to kind of fit this in in a day-to-day, moment-to-moment basis without going too crazy question everything. As I always say, ladies and gentlemen, be skeptical about everything. Just be open. So in season one, we did an episode on the chakras. We covered the basic colors. So you can go back and listen to that episode if you want to just have a refresh. But let's get into some of the other colors. Let's get into how we see them in the auric field, uh, how they show up in readings, because this is going to be one of the things when you're developing your psychic evolution, when you're really working with it, you want to have a baseline of your colors. And you'll build that over time. So don't think that you're going to memorize these things and have them be true for you. Because what we've discovered is each and every one of us is extremely unique and we all read energy differently. So just because Jamie has a certain color, that means something. When I see that color, it might mean something else. So you want to be really open. And Jamie always refers to his solidex of information. And that's what we do with these colors is we put it in the solidex of information so that we can recall it, we can remember it, we can receive that information as a part of a reading or as a part of an energy read. Even in our daily lives, as we're going through the grocery store or the bank, this can clue us in onto what people are going through at times. And being able to understand where other people are at gives you more the potential to begin to understand where you are at within life and how you vibe with it. And Mag and I are very honored. We have multiple modalities that we use to read energy and we both can read it in different ways. As Mag was saying, she gets colors as well. And in that, our job is to give you some tools, techniques and let you put them to the test and use them. So what I would love for you to do is grab a pen and paper. I want you to write this stuff down so that we can start to get you to train and get your information on the states of emotions. Because that kind of a connection can be a lot more powerful and insightful for the person that you're having a conversation with. And not only that, understanding where they're at so that you can talk with them, not just to them. So. If you got a pen and paper, let's begin. So we're going to start with a little bit of a list and some of the emotions that I read and the colors that I associate with them. And then we're going to get you to have a reference of what I do, but also we're going to have you go through each of these emotions and put what color instantly touches your mind if there's a color. Because when you can just read it and receive the information of a color, that is when the communication is happening. Get ready, grab that pen and paper. And I just want you to list one, two, three, just on top, boom, 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 as a column. And the emotions that we're going to target in this case, the first one is going to be anger. The second one is going to be love. The next one is fear. The next one, uncertainty.
Another, compassion. We'll do two more. The next one is frustration. And the last one is new ideas. New ideas. That's the list that we're going to start with. And then I'm going to give you my color association with these emotions so that you can get a gauge. You only need to use it as a reference. You don't have to use my colors. It's going to vibe and create your own rules and regs. That way you are the end result and you've got complete comfort and awareness of how you want to receive and work with the information. Now, we're just going to go through that list and I'll give you my color association. And it goes way beyond that, but we're just going to go for colors at the moment. And for anger, we have our own color of pink and a similar vibe to it. Love and, again, unconditional love. The next one is fear. Fear, to me, is a combination of colors. It is black and brown. Now, I don't always have a reason why it's a certain color or a shape, but I will always read it and do the best I can to give you exactly what I see. It's so interesting. I also want to remind people that you are going to understand and see colors based on what you know and what you've studied as well. I study Jin Shin Jitsu and black also resonates with the fear attitude of Jin Shin Jitsu. They actually say black and blue. They also refer to these depths of Jinshin Jitsu. They have different textures as well, which we'll get into later. Black is also the void. And the void is the unknown. And almost everybody, until they conquer their fears, has a fear of the unknown. And so there's a relationship between that void and the black energy and fearing what we're not really aware of, like the shadow figure that is like way bigger than it really is, because fear, again, is false energy appearing real. Beautifully said. So with the other emotion of uncertainty, we'll touch back on that because we're going to go for the textures on that one because of the way that, for me, when I read that, the colors are neutral. Now, the next one is the compassion. What is the vibe, the color of compassion? For me, when I see compassion vibe, it is greenish blue. Now to me, just a quick read, when I see the compassion, and in this case the greenish blue, I know that that compassion is for that person that they're coming from the heart chakra, the love and the empowerment and the compassion, and the blue for the throat chakra of communication and realization. And so notice how just those two colors have given me a little bit more information than just the colors in connection with that emotion. Now, the next one is frustration. To me, frustration is the color of red and black. Red and black. Now, when you say two colors, Jamie, does this mean that you're seeing those colors together or do you sometimes see red, sometimes see black? How does that work for you? Combination of all of those. And depending on the shape or the design or the texture of it, those colors can be blended to create new colors of information. It's, it's amazing and it's never ending. It's always connecting. So with that, as we have the frustration, again, that is a red and black vibe. Now, the next one and the last one that we're working with is new ideas. To me, it is the color of gold and white. Do you have a connection with any of the other colors like gold and white or how does that vibe to you, Matt? Well, if someone is in a place of expansion, I see a lot of gold and gold and silver. I, I consider them more divine energies. Silver would be like the divine feminine. Gold would be the divine masculine. The divine masculine expands and goes outward and the divine feminine contracts and comes inward. So gold is more expanded. Silver is more grounding. 
if I saw like silver coming down someone's legs, I'm like, ooh, you either need grounding or you're focused on grounding, depending on the read and the maybe if there was a question involved. And if I saw gold, it would be a, a time of expansion, a time of like really more of an outward type of energy. So that's how I process gold and silver in readings. And so again, I want you to go through your list of what you've written down and I want you to apply a color or colors, any of those that first touch your mind, whatever it is. Because again, when it's the first thing to touch your mind, you're not analyzing it, you're more than likely receiving it, you're reading it. Now, as we move along, I also, in your own time, if you have other emotions that you experience or that you're aware of, write those down and add them to your list and give color vibes to them. It will only empower and enhance your solidex of information to help other people and yourself. And I also think that the intensity of the colors that you see in a reading has a lot to do with an energy backing it. If colors are super intense and super vibrant, there might be a lot of life force energy behind all that. If colors are a little bit muted or pale or just showing up, there might be, ooh, this is just showing up type of energy. And so you have to kind of just pay attention to also the tonality, how vibrant they are. Do you feel like you could touch it? Is it that solid of a color or do you feel like you, it's transparent and you could really just put your hand right through that color? Because all of that is going to give you information as well. In some psychic readings, you'll see colors and you'll be like, okay, there is no doubt you are feeling this because it's so intense. Or it could be like, oh, you've got tinges of this. And those tinges could come as a transparency type of information. Or it could come as a different expression of that color, uh, like the textures that we're going to go into. Exactly. Now, just a little bit of uh, to follow through on what Mag is sharing. And for me, that color combo of textures and the design of them can speak volumes about people's state of mind. And what I mean by that is, if I'm talking with somebody and I start picking up a vibe, or in this case, a color, in this case, for this particular person, I'll start to pick up the color red. And I'm like, okay, they've got life experience and circumstances that they're having to survive and they're coming from the root chakra. Now, my energy, re my mind sight, I'm able to see those colors that create shapes for me of attainment. In this case, if I'm reading for a person and I see that red, but then it goes from brilliant red and it kind of goes down to a lighter red. And then in this case, as it's going down into a lighter red, it starts to go up and expand with white and gold. And so with that color combo and the way that it's designed, my awareness is, oh, so from that survival and that edge of life type of thing with the root chakra, it's giving you inspiration and ideas to create new realities and new directions. And, you know, again, I have my own verbiage like that. And people will be like, uh, that's exactly right. I'm like, okay, well, cool. Because I just want to, you know, share with you one, I need to be as accurate as possible. Two, I also love to inform people how I read for people. I want the empowerment. I want to be able to give this ability that is so natural. It's supernatural and everyone can use it. It's interesting. There is a, a metallic texture and it doesn't always come with the metallic color, like a chrome or a gold or a silver. It comes as a texture, like almost like a fine wire being pulled. And that in and of itself is a really interesting texture because it kind of tunes you into something a little bit like. And a lot of my experience with extraterrestrials, there's a little bit of that flavor there sometimes where it feels almost metallic. And it's not every time. It's just it's often enough to, to notice that there is a metallic texture. Do you ever feel that sometimes? You know, it's funny, but as you're talking about that, I do. It'll be like a metal vibe. And in some cases, it's like a lighter goldish brown. And then on that just slightly curved energy of the metal vibe, and I'm getting that other color layer on top of it, the next layer, I might get dimples or protrusions out of that. And for me, 
what that would tell me is there are three levels of consciousness that they're using at the moment to get to that particular circumstance. And in this case, that strong metal energy as the base to build on creates a foundation to go, okay, they're having to make some adjustments. That's part of the dome energy, but it's becoming solid. And now that they have a solid base to build on, they're starting to bring ideas to place upon that solid base of building. And in this case, it creates a layer of information. And then on the following layer of information would be the dimples or the protrusions. And that would tell me, one, if it's dimples and going down into it, that is the person has the information correct, but they're not bringing it to the surface to use it effectively. Or if it's protrusions out, it's, oh, okay, now this person has a good idea of the base. They have the information of it. And they're able to start expressing it in a variety of different ways. Is that crazy or what? It's colors and shapes and textures, yet it speaks volumes to me. And those speaking volumes just by a color or texture, I also kind of equate when, you ever question when the scientists that make these major life discoveries end up finding these things in numbers and letters? Eh, holographic universe. And when everything that you're aware of and not aware of, you realize it's all consciousness. All of those conscious vibrations are speaking to us all the time. It becomes, do we want to tap in? What level do we want to take it to? And who or how do we want to use it for? I love that expression um, of texture that you just gave us because I've seen things like that before, but I've never really got it. So I'm, I'm definitely going to work with that. Thank you. Also. There is textures of movement as well. You could see something swirling and it has a texture of movement. And does it have a color as well besides the texture and movement? It just depends on the reading. I think sometimes, yes, it has a color. Sometimes it's just whatever it is. It's interesting. We were at dinner the other night with some friends and we were talking and I could see this swirling thing over someone's shoulder and it, it became quite clear what it was about as conversation went on. And it's one of those things like, oh, File that in my solar decks of information because a universal cosmic energy just waiting to basically find a place to land in this person's energy field, but it's just swirling and waiting for this person to open up and say, yes, this is the direction I'm going before it could come into her reality. And it was just waiting there, just waiting, but very active. And that activity, I think, is sometimes texture of energy that sometimes we feel pushed to grow. Sometimes we feel We've got to make a decision right away because the universe is waiting on us. And in this case, it really felt that way. And I think she felt it that way as well. So it was really, really palpable. You know, and I think when you can share with people what you're seeing in your mind side, they're like in the beginning, a, a circle, a vortex thing that's swirling. What, what does that mean? But also look what Mag is saying. And that is... The universe is always flowing and always on and amped up. The universe will not make you do anything. But in this case, Mag is sensitive. She feels energy and she was able to see that energy vortex, I believe, swirling over the shoulder. Which shoulder was that? It was the right shoulder. Looking at it, it did have kind of like a light blue, whitish energy around it. Now, I ask that because for me, it also becomes the symbology of right and left, the symbology of the hands and arms, and the symbology of the feet or legs. Now, for them, this is why I asked, you know, which side was that? On the right? Oh. So to me, that would also tell me that that decision or potential was also of her spiritual, creative, intuitive side. If it were on the left, it would be analyzing, categorizing, and trying to feel if that fits in. And isn't it interesting that I can have different parameters of different lays of energy to get what speaks to me? And then at the moment, it's also that it's over the shoulder of this person. And to me, that elevated energy of the universe is also sharing the fact that you are completely encompassed if and when you're ready to allow that into your life. And it will literally swirl right into you which is pretty much how life is. As we send out, we receive and vice versa. And the ability to be able to, again, understand people a little bit more where they're at. And then you begin to understand a little bit more where you're at. 
and you begin to find yourself within life. And the more that you find yourself within life, the more that you find that life within you. Now, the textures, do you actually see those in your mind sight or do you also feel them with your skin vision? Both. Because it's that ability exactly like that, that I need to use multiple modalities to get even more insight if I need to. So this is something you can try at home is when you're seeing a texture, when you're seeing a color, really focus on your palms and practice like just imagining yourself touching it and seeing what that color feels like, seeing what that texture feels like. Because as we are seeing things uh, in any type of psychic read, whether it's professionally or not, makes no difference. But when we're seeing things in our mind sight and feeling things and seeing colors and textures, you can actually work with your psychic senses during those times. You could be like, oh, I wonder what that feels like and see if you can take your metaphysical skin vision and just kind of roll your hand over that color, roll your hand over the texture and see if it will register. You can also, you know, work with, does this have a smell? Does this have a taste? Is there any sound to this as well? Because this is something that you can bring in as just ideas to start practicing using your other clairs, your other senses, and you may receive information. You might not. You might just be seeing it. You might be seeing it and feeling it. You might see, feel, hear, smell, taste, all of it, which would be really interesting to taste color. Never even thought about that. Have you ever tasted color, Jamie? Lightly, but I do tend to feel color and see sound. It's amazing. You're sharing an aspect where People need to understand a little bit more of what's going on and the practicality of this. And, and just like Mag was saying is, how about just like we do for the psychic training, right? For me, I would watch TV and if there's a game show or a movie or whatever the case is, if there's an emotion that somebody ignites in this case in a show, boop, I'll stop that because I now have that emotion of the action that they're playing and I'll get a color. And so when you can sit in the comfort of your own home and watch TV, you can start training yourself completely and consistently. Not only that, you could start surfing the channels to get different ways of expressing that energy. In this case, one, through the acting that gives you the emotional response of information. Two, that maybe you can go see a documentary and these people are speaking from the heart and soul. And in that spiritual vibe, rather than a different vibe of daily living kind of thing, they're able to start expressing through, in this case, emotions and information about those circumstances. So what are some of the other textures that you feel? There are so many and infinite textures that I can feel. One of the emotions, in this case, uncertainty. Now, I will give you what it looks like to me as the design and the color combo. So with the uncertainty, it becomes like lines of energy from up and down, up and down, not sideways, up and down. And with those strips of energy, I also will get colors. The strip lines itself is a darker color, gray to almost brown. And with this, those strips of uncertainty are neutral. Like, here's this color of the strip. What's in between this is clarity, which is nothing. It's completely clear. And so what I'm reading in this case is they have the idea. Here's the first strip. but. Uh, they're, they're questioning it so much. Okay, I'm not getting the information. Let's try the next one. And then they're slicing it up again and trying to fit that in, but they're not quite so clear of how to do that and integrate it. What I'm picking up is that's just ideas of approach. Yeah, but I can't act on it. And it literally creates shapes of energy for me to read. So it's that kind of a design with the textures. In this case, there are slices and open areas within it. There are areas of alignment and open areas in it so that I know here's the energy read of an idea. And isn't it interesting? I've placed in this case 
the first line going up and down is the idea of what they're working with. Again, it will be many different shapes and colors to you. Whatever you vibe with is what I want you to use. And Mac, like you, in that Solidex of information, are you able to take those colors and the information about that to either the tarot cards or other dynamics of either numerology or any of those that you can gain even more information from those textures that are used in one way for a circumstance that can be used in many different ways. Well, it's interesting because in the tarot, we work with elements and every element is associated with the color. When you study traditional Chinese medicine or anything elemental, there's always a color associated to the directions, to the elements, to all these things. So with that, it depends on really what you study. Yes, there's a ton of correlations in the tarot of color that would mean something. Blue, communication, how you think. It's definitely the head stuff. When you're thinking about fire, you're thinking of red and orange and the lower chakras. So yes, absolutely. You can dive into colors with these things. Really depends on what you studied, what you're relating to, and you don't actually have to study anything to see colors. But there is a resonance. There is a collective consciousness that builds on the energy of every color. So if red is about your root chakra, it can be about fear of scarcity. It can be about finding your roots, your ancestors, connecting into the earth, getting rooted. And then it can also be about anger. And so there's a wide variety of expressions and emotional expressions for each color. Because when you look at it, there's really not that many colors unless you get the huge Crayola box. (laughs) And then there's even more expressions of energy. But if you just narrowed it down to your seven basic chakra colors, you know, white, black, silver, gold, then you're working with how many different emotions and feelings are there? So many. And will it be a combination of colors? Will it be just one color, two colors? And so building your own repertoire is really the direction we want to go. I process colors through Jinchen Jitsu, first and foremost, and then through the Tarot and the things that I've studied and the chakra system. Those are my three things that every color will be processed through what I know. So it might mean something a little bit different to me than it will to other people, unless they've studied the same things and they'd be like, oh yeah, I gotcha. I gotcha. I totally see the same thing. And so you have to really just be open of paving your own path in this. Now you can use everything that Jamie shares with you of his way of seeing things, whether it's a color or a texture or anything. And you can say, you know what? I want to implement this. And then you can have a conversation with your master guide and say, hey, listen, let's use this for a while. Let's see what information I pick up because I'd love to know when someone's uncertain. I'd love to know when they're certain. I'd love to know when they have frustration and compassion and love and all these different things that we've been sharing with you today. So you can make that arrangement with yourself and your master guide or higher self if you choose to. Or you can just say, well, let me see how this feels. When I'm uncertain, let me look in the mirror. Let me try to see if I see color around myself. When someone in my family is feeling the vibration of, of empowerment. Let me look at them and really see, do I see a color here? You know, this is all experiential and it's all up for practice. Remember, this is about your psychic evolution and you're evolving into a lot of different things. So colors, textures, all of it is up for grabs. So it's not always easy to, how do I feel colors? Well, I just want to give you a technique and a visualization so that you can begin to discover your own chakras and how you're vibing from those chakras. So I want you to get yourself nice and comfortable. Relax. Let what it is hold you as it will. And as you relax into this, I want you to see in your mind sight, in your mind's eye, your energy field that is clean and clear around your physical body in a perfectly circular energy. And now we're going to start connecting with the colors of the chakras and our own self-communication of information. So, 
as you sit relaxed and in your mind sight, looking at your clean and clear energy field, I want you to start pulling from the root chakra, which is red. And from that root chakra of red, I want you to just see it radiating out energy and light. And you begin to see your auric field, your energy field, turn into the color of red. Feel this color of red and how it feels around your body. Because in mind sight and seeing you sitting there, you're connecting with your metaphysical body as well as your physical. And with that root chakra color of red, I want you to maybe just one experience or two to pull from your own life experience and what you feel like you might be running from the root chakra. Is there a circumstance in your life that you're having to be defensive about? And feeling the color vibe of red, it will be very easy. For when you're talking with people, you may not always see a color, but you'll get the vibration of where they're coming from, what chakra, just by feeling their energy, not only seeing it, feeling it. And so, as you sit there within this red energy field and feeling a couple of maybe life circumstances that could be connected to the root chakra of survival and life force energy, able to start activating. And I want you to see your energy field move from red to orange. That is the next chakra, just below the navel. And I want you to see it completely around you. Not only do I want you to feel the color, but if you can, I want you to imagine yourself breathing in this color and vibing with is there a scent that goes with it? Is it a vibrational scent of information that you can pick up on? Good. And as we connect with that orange and not only feel it, but breathe it, you're going to move from orange to yellow, which is the next chakra just a little bit above the navel. And this is your clairsentient abilities, the ability to feel the life force energy. And as you see that color brilliantly yellow in your energy field, breathe it in, feel it, and associate it. Meaning, was there ever a time in your life that you had a gut feeling that you didn't understand, but you felt it, and then it ended up playing out? Those kinds of information will be in your energy field. One feeling can be worth a thousand words and then some. And now moving from that solar plexus, the yellow, you're going to move to the heart chakra and see your energy field begin to shift to green. Feel that beautiful green energy in your field. Feel it and breathe it in. The more that you're able to work with these different ways of reading, the more information you will be able to put together from the different ways of reading. Good. And that love vibe about the love of humanity, the love of a beautiful child or animal, the love of life, anything that you felt love, just vibe with. Give yourself an association for those emotional states of energy. Now, moving from the heart chakra, which is green, you move up to the next throat chakra and you see the color green begin to change into the color of blue. Now, feeling the connection, in this case, of the color blue and the throat chakra, you now have a solid validation of information about this particular color. Because when you see blue, you'll have an idea that it may also be connected to that particular chakra that they're functioning from. And if there's ever been an experience in life to where you 
were able to share information, to talk with somebody who got what you were saying. They didn't only heard what you were saying, they felt what you meant. And that kind of conversation, that speaking up and communicating will be another feeling information about that color. Good. And in your own time, you can take those colors and apply it from the chakras to any life experience and see and feel where it might be coming from. You'll begin to get that alignment. And now, moving from the throat chakra of blue, I want you to see your energy field begin to change. And in this case, we're going to move to the third eye chakra, just between your eyebrows, right in your forehead. And to me, that color is purple. Feel those kinds of connections. We're going to move to the last chakra in the energy system, and it is the crown chakra. So I want you to see your energy field moving from the purple. And to me, the crown chakra is pure white light. That is the encompassment of all of the colors in the spectrum. Because from that one white light, I can pick up streams of color within their overall standing of how they're viewing life and usually be very accurate with different ways of how they got to that point of realization or that point of creativity to manifest experiences or people or dynamics. And again, you work with these in your own way. Use your connection of association, not trying to analyze it and think it through, feel it through. And that kind of feeling, whatever touches your mind first, color, feeling of information and circumstance, whatever it is, go with it. Say it, and if you can, Write it down, but it will be practice. And the more you practice, the stronger and clearer your solidex of information is able to be retrieved. So we hope you enjoyed this episode with colors and textures. Now there's several ways to join the evolution. We have a Facebook group page, which is Psychic Evolution. We have a beautiful community just practicing and building and strengthening the psychic abilities and the mediumship abilities that we have. So please join us. We'd love to see you there. So if you want to join the evolution even further than just having fun with us on the Facebook group, go ahead and check out our Supercast page. There's a couple of tiers that you can choose from. You can join the evolution. You can learn even more how to develop your psychic and mediumship abilities. Your abilities are so natural. They're supernatural. We'll have links in the show notes for you as well. And remember, it's all about your psychic senses. Let's join the evolution and have some fun with this we're doing this together in our psychic evolution